everybody, Deo really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. We are along Hachiro Iba's route. And surprisingly, Sen has willingly and quite quickly offered to give Iba the other demon's arm. I really thought it would take some doing and convincing her, but nope, she just went right ahead and offered it without us even asking. Because, I mean, it seems like there's kind of a prophecy about a catastrophe happening if the arms were ever used, and... I don't know, does this mean after we take care of Takeda, they expect him to sacrifice his arm back or something? I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if she gives us conditions or if they're going to talk about this later on. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Once it is fused with you, there is no turning back, and the life you had lived as a human would cease, for you cannot interfere with human history. Iba's eyes fluttered. He would be giving up his humanity. That meant he could no longer fight alongside the Shinsengumi which for him was nearly unthinkable considering his longtime friends were a crucial part of himself. Even then, If you are willing to accept these conditions, and are determined enough to give up all that you are for the sacrifice, then this power can be yours. I will leave this decision to you. For a while, Eva stared at the demon's arm, eventually closing his eyes and muttering to himself. Earlier, I said I could fight with only one of my arms if need be but that means nothing if I don't have the power to protect the person I care about the most. Especially knowing someone like them are involved with Satsuma Choshu. Regardless, I'm sure that the demise of the Shogun army is inevitable. So for me, there's nothing to think about. After Iba said this, he turned to face me once again. Chizuru, if you could please give me the water of life. Even if it means giving up my humanity, the thought of losing my love would only hurt me more. Chizuru, you have to react to the fact that he called you his love. W what What could I say? Well, my first thought would have been, what, your love? But no, we have to say, okay. So, this is the only way, huh? It must have been an obvious question to Iba, but it still felt so wrong to me. Iba silently nodded. His clear eyes glowed resolutely. Seeing his expression in this moment, reminded me of the moment that Sanin had decided to drink the water of life. Sanin had mentioned that losing one's arm was essentially death to any swordsman. I suppose Iba had felt the same, both of them deeply committed to their duties as warriors. To feel cornered, suffocating under the possibility of having no other real solution and choosing this. And I thought to myself that, because I understood where Iba had been coming from, I couldn't bring myself to stop him. Honestly, I want nothing less for you than to become a fury. My throat squeezed as the words left my mouth, but Eva smiled despite my insistence. Retaining my life as a human isn't important. Huh? I'm making this decision so that I can fulfill what is asked of me as a warrior. That is all I want. However, there's another reason too. Can you guess what it is? Um... I considered what it could be for a second, but no idea came to mind. Because you're ignoring everything on purpose. Iba blushed tenderly, and his cheeks were rosy as he offered his answer. If you recall the insults that were levied against you for not being human. I think being human is overrated anyway. Oh, that's right. He was talking about the time Takeda called me a beast. No, that can't have been it. If I looked back far enough, I could recall a moment in our distant past. But where? Ah, oh, that's right. It was during our childhood, as many other children would gather to play around the clinic. But children stopped coming to visit after a certain incident. At the time, some of the other children had acquired a ladder, climbing up to reach the clinic's roof. You guys, don't climb up there. You'll get hurt. However, no one listened to me. This is nothing. It's not that high. Someone had been pretending to be a firefighter and climbed up the ladder before it tipped over. Oh no! Watch out! I lost sight of myself and ran to the ladder. Then... Ah! The ladder toppled over, and I had fallen with it. My arm received a deep cut from a stone beside me. Yikes! Ouch! Uh, are you okay? Whoa, you're bleeding. Oh, this is fine. This isn't too serious, it'll heal up. After saying this, after counting internally to ten, it healed completely. The neighborhood children widened their eyes in surprise, entranced by my healing powers. 
Then... Wait, what? What just happened? You were bleeding a second ago. What, doesn't this happen to you guys? My wounds heal quite quickly. I didn't notice it until recently, and I didn't know it wasn't too common. The children didn't wait for me to finish. Uh, uh, a monster! Some kind of weird healing monster! Weird healing monster. Yeah, that sounds really scary. Oh! Before I could call them back, all of the children scattered from the yard. And the parents never made a deal of this. And the next day, other children had come to visit and see me at my house. For me, it was normal for my injuries to heal quickly. I didn't know any differently. Never in my wildest imagination did I expect people to show surprise, let alone hatred toward me, because of something like that. And it didn't end there. Hey, monster! Why don't you hurry up and leave Edo? The children began flinging rocks at the clinic, and I could see the passers-by whispering rumors about me as they walked by our clinic. <sighs> what kind of child would have the foresight to know that their body was any different? Even so, every child I had grown up with or played with learned to treat me with seething contempt. People hated what they didn't know. They didn't know me, and it crushed me inside to believe it. Just then... Hey, who's throwing rocks over there? What if someone got hurt? Iba, who I'd called Hachiro back then, was studying my father's books and came running out of my father's clinic. Wait, Hachiro, it's okay. What do you mean it's okay? I couldn't bring myself to speak. I stayed silent. If I had told Hachiro what I was, even he might begin to hate me. If you don't tell me, I won't know. Let me help you. He quietly urged me to speak up. So I timidly told him. It's my fault. They're making fun of me. I can't stop it. Hachiro seemed to have a word stuck on the tip of his tongue, waiting to respond, but then... Is it so bad to be different than other people? Huh? Well... If I were to be different from other children, would you hate me? I shook my head. Hachiro had always been so kind to me. I loved him. Even if he were different, nothing could change how I felt about him. Right? I'm the same way. You're not a monster. You're just an ordinary girl. His words seemed to heal the wounds that were hurting my heart. However, for your own safety, it may be better for you to keep your healing powers to yourself and keep it secret from everyone else. You may have your feelings hurt again in the future. Okay. Oh, why the long face? I'm not trying to make you feel ashamed. <laughs> Hachiro had been able to settle a lot of the uneasiness in my heart, but... The pain of losing all my friends to this lie, that I was some monster was a little hard to assuage. Uh, oh no, what should I do? Don't be sad. Oh, I know. If anyone makes fun of you, I'll beat them up. Beat them up? You? His figure was slender like a little girl's, and the thought of him becoming a warrior was so strange to me that I couldn't help but question him. It, it'll be fine. I haven't been practicing too much, but from now on I'll make sure to work diligently on my fencing, if it means I can protect my dear friend. The brightness of his wide smile felt even more warm than usual. And just like that, I felt many of my worries slip away from under me. Oh, it was so cute. I owe it to you for becoming a serious swordsman. If it means I can spend another day looking into your beautiful face, I will forfeit my humanity. Please, for me, my love, let me truly show you how I can truly protect you. Eva stared at me with an unwavering disposition. My love for him made my heart heavy with worry. Right, that's like twice he referred to me as his love, and I have not reciprocated. However, if Eva's true purpose was to live life by the sword, there's only one thing I could do to help him. <sighs> I had reached into the pocket and grabbed the glass file to place in front of him. His voice trembled. Th thank you so, so much. He held the bottle, looking at it with a peculiar sense of wonder, and placed it back into his pocket. Just then... Why did you place it in your pocket? Why didn't you drink it? Princess, I have news for you. Kiku, did something happen? Kodo and Takeda have broken through our seal, and they have infiltrated the village. They're heading directly for us. Oh, no time then. Get a drink, Iba. What? Uh, Chizuru, Iba, you two get out of here. For them to put forth such effort to come back here can only think means they are coming for you, Chizuru. I nodded back to her sternly, and Iba and I gathered ourselves to leave the room. Wow, really? 
I really thought Eva would just really quickly drink the water and attach the arm and fight him. Gah! I heard the sound of flesh being sliced open, along with a brutal blood-curdling scream. Then, a man covered in blood burst in, falling to the floor. Th this man, I, I think he was the one who had been guarding the entrance to this building. Sen glared angrily in the direction of the forest. Shortly afterwards, a figure was approaching us casually, someone I had no desire to see. Ah, uh, I had a feeling you were here, Chizuru. You're an unwanted guest. Father, Takeda, what are you doing here? Oh, I should think that's obvious. Do you really have to ask? Is it not so obvious? I have come back for you, my child. My, what a troublesome one you are. That is not what she was asking. How dare the two of you show your faces here? Sen had stood in an indignant rage, glaring at my father. Father, however, seemed unfazed. When last we met, I was rudely interrupted, but you are still no match for me. <sighs> Kimigiku readied her stance, preparing herself to fight Takeda, but... <laughs> Too slow. Takeda seemed to move three paces quicker. I guess that demon's arm really does have a lot of power. <sighs> Flustered by the rapid swings of Takeda's fists, Kimigiku was eventually thrown to the side. <laughs> this is nothing. He gazed over Kimigiku's body on the floor and turned to face Iba. Still kicking around, eh? I guess human bodies are a little sturdier than I give them credit for. Meg, he talks like he's been a fury forever already. Too slow, dumbass. Takeda anticipated Iba's counterattack, intercepting a sword easily. If it came to the two of them engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat, there was no way Iba could stand a chance. Both he and his sword were flung aside. What could I do? I knew that I wasn't really any match for Takeda. However, abandoning Iba and Kimigiku to escape was not an option. Though my hands were trembling, I nervously reached for the Kodachi at my hips. What are you doing? You know that you stand no chance against Takeda, don't you? I mean, I don't mind just finishing him off nice and slow here, but... I owe Kodo a favor for all he's done, so Yukimura, you're coming with me. I had a small window of time to find an opening into which I could strike Takeda. However, a hateful aura radiated from his entire body, intimidating me from stepping forward. I had to close my ears, blocking out the hateful thoughts to step forward and conquer the fear. You don't mind, do you, Chizuru? Even if we left Koro B, the Shogun army seems to be heading toward an inevitable defeat. Even if it meant cutting myself from the rest of humankind... I will choose this path. I heard the shattering of glass. Then... When the hell did he have the time to put the demon's arm on? What the... Takeda's eyes were wide with shock. Y you bastard. W what's with your arm? Takeda's like, are you copying off me? Why are you asking such a foolish question? You should know by now. There was a coldness to Iba's tone puffing his chest and arms up confidently. Takeda furrowed his brows, scowling at Iba as his teeth gritted from hatred. Got it. So you drank the water of life as well, eh? And now you've got yourself an arm to match. Guess it was only a matter of time before you'd become some blood-sucking beast too. You just called yourself a blood-sucking beast, Takeda. Yes, just like you. Iba responded stoically, continuing on with the fixed gaze upon Takeda. However, let me tell you one thing. The difference between you and me is that I've invited this power unto myself willingly. Although we have both lost our sword arms, I am replaced them with demonic powers. The way we use these powers will be for separate purposes. The powers I have gained are going to be used to protect the people I love, and to uphold what I believe is right. The floor shook beneath Iba as he gathered his strength, causing Takeda to step back slowly. Immediately, Iba had unsheathed his sword, and by the time I blinked, he had already closed the distance between himself and Takeda. Their swords danced in a flurry of movements too quick to see with my eyes, and Iba's newfound strength and speed made his display masterful. Yep, Takeda stands no chance now that they are physically even. D damn it Takeda struggled to keep up with the pace of Iba's barrage of strikes, panting in the frenzy. 
If there was a question of which of the two demons was stronger, it was clear Iba had the advantage. It appears we have reached an impasse here. It would be unwise for you to lose what great progress you have made in your new form. It would be in our best interest to retreat for now. What did you say, you bastard? You can kill him any other time. Do you want to die from your own stubbornness? Reluctantly, Takeda heeded my father's words, sheathing his sword back into its scabbard. <sighs> you may have the upper hand this time, but next time we meet, I'm slicing off that pretty head of yours. Brace yourself, Hachiro Iba. Wait! I had rushed up to stop them, but... Why did I rush up to stop them? Father and Takeda vanished like mist without a trace. After we had regrouped ourselves, I sat with Sen and Kimikiku about what to do next. The two of us will lead a pursuit after them in order to retrieve the demon's arm once more. Will both of you be okay? Just earlier, it seemed like neither of them stood a chance against Takeda. If they were to meet again on the battlefield, how could the outcome be any different? We do not have many other options. We must avenge the fallen demons murdered by him. Fighting him head on will be a little tough, but sometimes battles require alternative strategies. <sighs> Sen and Kimigiku seemed set in their resolve to find him, but I could sense what felt a little bit of nervousness toward what was about to come. I am aware I may be repeating myself, but, Iba, your powers are something that shan't be shown to any human with whom you make contact. You are to never use your powers against humans. You understand this, right? Yes, I understand. Wait, what if it's a bad human? Can't he use it against bad humans? In any other circumstance, I would have found the use of the Water of Life as reprehensible. And as far as you are concerned, Iba, although I accept what you have become, I do not accept you as one of our own. Well, that's kind of cruel. Princess, you're not making any sense. Exactly. <sighs> thank you, Sen. I don't know how I can ever repay you. I can't thank you enough. You have nothing to thank me for. If we had other options... I could have done something to save someone dear to your heart from being a fury. Don't say that. Until we see how the battle ends, I suppose. Now, Chizuru, we should head out soon. Okay. Please, Sen and Kimigiku, be careful. I'll be holding on to this arm for a while. When the time comes, I shall return it. Also, he is planning on returning it. But wait, I don't understand. Did Sen not give him the arm in order to help get back the arm from Takeda? So shouldn't he be going with them to retrieve that arm? After we said our goodbyes, we bowed to them walking out of the village back to Osaka Castle. I have no idea how the fight against Takeda and Father will turn out, but... For now, ours is another path. All we can do now is move forward, no matter what awaits us. With a newfound resolve for the future, Iba and I made our descent down the path of the mountain. After becoming separated from Sen, we had left the Yase village to head toward Osaka Castle. We happened to sneak past what was left of the Satsuma Choshu troops a few times. Four days had passed since the fighting broke out, and on January 7th, we had finally arrived at Osaka Castle. We're here! We're finally here! Seeing the majestic castle filled me with an incredible amount of relief. The Shinsengumi men are all here. Iba looked up, marveling at the grand castle as it loomed over the moonlit forest. I, too, felt quite overwhelmed by the view, but it seemed like Iba's expression indicated he was stuck on something he couldn't shake off. Eventually, he turned to look at me. Chizuru, I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? I had no idea what favor he could possibly be thinking of at this time, so I waited nervously for him to continue. Please, keep the fact that I have taken the Water of Life a secret from the rest of the Shinsengumi. But don't you think your arm is a bit conspicuous there? What? But... I could understand that he may not have wanted his longtime friends to know he'd become a fury, but... His health could dwindle in the future, and it wasn't like being a fury was something you could hide forever. However, Iba seemed to read the concern in my face, and he continued. I won't say that it'll be a secret forever. I will, of course, tell them when the time comes. For now, though, I just can't bring myself to do so. All right, we'll wait for the right time. Eva watched the moonlight radiate its cold light behind the clouds above. Was it for my sake that he seemed conflicted about all of this? Um, so, how have you been feeling? 
So far, I haven't sensed anything too strange. As a matter of fact, I feel rather energetic compared to before. That's good. I'm happy to hear it. Even during the day, you felt okay, huh? Eva hadn't seemed to suffer any of the afflictions that came from being a fury or attaching himself to the demon's arm. In my heart, though, I had made a wish, even if I knew it may not come to anything. I had prayed that neither the water of life nor Eva's new demonic limb would do him any harm. Hey, someone is approaching us. I gasped, looking up to see. Two shadows crept from the distance, walking toward us. Ah, my goodness. Don't scare me like that. Who's there? Shimada and Soma, both of you are safe. Yukimura, goodness, we were worried sick about you. I'm fine. Eva saved me and escorted me back here safely. We owe a debt of gratitude, Eva. Seriously, thank you. And there's no need to thank me. Are Toshi and the others safe? Yes, currently he is in a meeting with the other captains for our next course of action. Our next course of action? Right, huh. We'll have to pre Well, the Shinsengumi will have to prepare for their next attack on the Satsuma Choshu. After Hachiro offered up his suggestion, Shimada and Soma looked at each other, falling silent. Is something the matter? After a beat, Eva seemed to catch on to the pause in the conversation, prompting him to ask. Well... We'll tell you the details inside, this way. The war with the Satsuma Choshu seemed to produce an uneasy atmosphere at Asaka Castle. Not a single person we walked past, however, was in uniform, nor did they seem prepared to fight or return to the battlefield. I found this quite perplexing, thinking so to myself as we entered the common room. Yukimura, you... you're alive. Hey, Jakata, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry you guys. No. Only thing that matters is that you're alive. They killed Gen, who we thought was with you. So I figured you were either dead or had been kidnapped. Glad to see you're safe. <sighs> the subject I had been avoiding thinking about was bought up. I don't know what I could say that wouldn't have come out wrong. In no way, so he did. Back then, I could only hope it hadn't been so. Such fears had crossed my mind at the time. However, I suppose I compelled myself to put it to the back of my mind for my own sake. Hijikata looked down, biting his lips. Yeah, he's gone. It wasn't pretty. <sighs> I gasped, but every breath felt heavy, like my lungs had suddenly filled with water. The gentle soul, Inoue. As I had been acclimating myself here, he always gave me so much support. To think someone so kind-hearted died so needlessly. I was beginning to be consumed with guilt, and Hijikata seemed to read my mood continuing on. However, he died like a man. All of his wounds were from the front, so even his crap had gotten rough, he stood his ground. Honestly, can't imagine any other man who's ever died as honorably as he did. <sighs> Although we didn't want to show it, Hijikata was overcome with emotion, and as I watched his eyes force back tears, my stomach was sinking. Oh yeah, I want to run something by you. Yes, what is it? Yamazaki's been hurt. Bad. You think you can take a look at him? Well, maybe it's best for you to wait before seeing him for now. <laughs> Hearing even more bad news had sunk what little hope I had into a deep, crushing nothingness. Judging by the way Hijikata said it, Yamazaki must have been in really bad shape. I understand that Hijikata may have wanted to save me from hearing the reality of it, but... No, I'm fine. I'll see to him as soon as I can. Please, if I may. Yeah, the sooner the better if there's anything we can do for him. Hijikata had seemed to loosen up a little. I see. I'm sure that'd make him happy. And while I had been hearing about what became of some of my comrades, Eva was celebrating his reunion with Motoyama. Oh, poor Motoyama. <laughs> All this time without Eva. Eva? I'm so glad you're safe. When I hadn't seen or heard from you, I thought... I apologize for worrying you. I'm fine now. Eva almost choked on his words, hesitating a little before saying he was fine. It wasn't noticeable, I think, to anyone else. What are the other soldiers? Are they safe? Yes, everyone made it to Osaka Castle safely. We were actually just speaking with Hijikata about the next move, but... Motoyama turned his head to look at Hijikata... Before we can make any decisions about what's next, I want to hear the latest about the warfront. 
shouldn't Eva not be allowed in this stuff anymore since he has the arm and promised Sen he can't interfere with history? Hijikata let out a huge breath, gritting his teeth as he faced downward. Well, since you've gotten here, I had a feeling you'd say that, but doesn't look good for us this time. So, this means we're going to work to fortify Osaka Castle and prepare for battle, right? Eva expected Hijikata to agree with him, but both Hijikata and Motoyama fell silent. Hijikata was the one that spoke up. Normally, I'd agree with you, but protecting this castle is going to be pointless when there's no one keeping us here. Huh? What do you mean, no one keeping us here? Supposedly, Lord Yoshinobu bitched out and fled to Edo on one of the ships not too long ago. As soon as we're done packing, we'll be going to Edo too. <laughs> Eva was awestruck, seemingly at a loss for words as he froze from hearing the bad news. His case fell to the floor. Lord Yoshinobu did what? That can't be. Yeah, this may be kind of rough on you since you were in Okuzume, but everything has been upside down for me since we got involved in this mess. No. There seemed to be a strained effort coming from Iba to appear composed in front of Hijikata. However, it seemed like there was nothing he could say to oppose Hijikata's words. After a brief pause, Iba quietly lifted his head. Motoyama, will the Yugeki unit return to Edo as well? Well, as it stands, it appears to be so. Toshi, what will become of the Shinsengumi from here on? No point in us staying behind. All we can do now is head back to Edo and get our bearings. This loss has been a serious blow. <sighs> but I'll spare you the details for now. Why don't you go around and greet everyone? I'm sure they've been worried about you. Oh, okay. My heart was pounding as the weight of the bad news was sinking in. However, I can't just sulk forever. Hijikata, Iba, and the men of the Shinsengumi hadn't shown any sign of giving up yet. Well, we'll be on our way then. I deeply apologize. What are you apologizing for? For being a Bakushin. Iba must have felt guilty for the actions of Lord Yoshinobu in his abandonment of the Shinsengumi and the rest of the Shogunate army. Hey, I'm a Bakushin now too. You have no business apologizing to me. Iba felt a sense of relief from Hijikata's understanding, and he smiled in return. You two are in the same boat. Then he and Motoyama stood up. Oh. I have found myself speaking out involuntarily, coaxed by the thought of Iba leaving me. What's the matter? Iba stopped and looked at me. I had almost apologized instinctively, but I was able to stop myself. I think that if I had apologized, it would have brought Iba's mood down again. Iba, I can't thank you enough for everything. Iba smiled kindly, like he usually does, in response. Think nothing of it, but rather... Please keep our secret safe for me. Don't say that in front of other people! I gasped from hearing his request, looking around to see that Motoyama had overheard him. See? What'd I tell ya? Hey, what secret are you talking about? It's our secret, right? Oh, y yes Well, you made me curious and all, but if it's none of my business, then I'm fine not knowing. Ah, He seems like a sweetie pie. I had been escorting the two of them to the exit when... What? You guys can't leave me here? Is it true the two of them were here? If it's not, I'm gonna kick your ass. All of a sudden, Nagakura, Harada, and Heisuke came bursting into the common room. Their eyes were fixed dead on me. Chizaru! Oh man, what a relief! I don't know what I would have done if I never saw you again. Are you hurt at all? No, I'm fine. I'm sorry for worrying you guys. You idiot. You don't need to apologize for that. We're just glad to see her safe and sound. Eva watched as the Shinsengumi captains gathered around me, but eventually... Hey, you guys should be happy to see Eva too, he's your friend as well. I watched from out of the corner of my eye, him leave with Motoyama. Hey, get back here! No! We can't separate! Darn it. Alright, well, final chapter, starting... Uh, we might as well break here since the final chapter is going to be coming right up. So I hope to see you all in the next video or some of my other ones, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? Bye-bye, everybody.